Thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, where in verse 27, we are told that we are appointed to die once and then face the judgment. Sometimes in the Bible, we have to speak about things that are not pleasant. Death is definitely not pleasant, especially for the unbelievers. But for us who are in Christ, as Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 tells us, to live is Christ, to die is gain, not loss. But we have to die because of sin. God gave Adam a command in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. He, he was free to eat of any fruit on any tree except one tree, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 that on the day that you eat of the tree on this fruit, you shall surely die. Now we know that Adam didn't die that specific day because in Genesis chapter 5 verses 3 and 4, we are told that Adam lived to be 930 years old. What happened was that Adam died spiritually, which ultimately we ultimately would lead to his physical death. We are told in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we are told in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. My brothers and sisters, death is a reality. We're told in Psalm chapter 90, verse 10, that a man or woman will live 70 years, and if by reason of strength, 80 years. And it's interestingly enough that with the dawn of all the medicine and technology we have some 3,000 years after Psalm, the Psalms were written, man lives about 70 to 80 years still. I believe the average lifespan for a man is about 74 years old, and for a woman it's 81 years old. But we all fall short of God's glory and we all sin. We're told in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, from dust we came and dust we shall return. Interestingly enough, I'm a custodian in a public school. I see a lot of dust. I have to clean dust. I have to wipe the dust. Dust is just dead human particle skin. You see dust in your house. It's a part of who you are. And it's like the Bible says, we go back. We were formed from the dust that God created us and we go back to the dust. My brothers and sisters, the things we have here on earth only are temporary. Where I'm talking to you from my car, it's a windy day, so on windy days I come in here because I don't want the sound to be disrupted. I usually go into a wooded area not too far from here. But where I'm talking to you from my car, about 100 feet from me, there's a memorial for a 23-year-old man who was killed in a car accident about three, three months ago. He hit a tree. And when he first passed away... A lot of people showed up, a lot of cars, tons of cars. Three months later, nobody ever comes anymore. People go on with their lives. And the only one that will really remember the soul of a human being is God. You know, when we talk about death and the end results of the penalty of death, which is hell, people don't want to hear this. And there's a lot of religions that want to teach that there is no hell. Even professing Christians with their lips want to say that there's no hell. However, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on his earthly ministry spoke about hell and damnation more than anything else. In Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself gave a parable of a rich man and Lazarus. The rich man had all the things in this world, all the pleasures of this world. Lazarus was a poor beggar scrapping for little foods wherever he could find it. They both died. The rich man went to hell. He speaks about the torment of how hot it was down there. And how he was burning up and that he wished that someone could just dip a little water and put it on his tongue. Yet we're told that Lazarus was brought to the bosoms of Abraham. Abraham's bosom, which is heaven. My brothers and sisters, we can have that eternal life. We are told that Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross in Luke chapter 23, he was crucified with two criminals. And in verse 43, he told one of those criminals, Today you will be with me in paradise. Because that man at the moment of his death was saying, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. My friends, there's an old saying, there's no U-Hauls behind a hearse. You can't bring anything from this world to, with you out of this world. This is why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us to store up treasures in heaven, not on things here on earth. The things that you have here on earth is going to stop once you die. We are told in Psalm in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 to 8, 
that the grass withers and the flower fades away, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Everything that you possess here on this earth, you can't bring it with you. The only thing that you can bring with you when you die is your soul. And as I told you from that story that Jesus gave with the rich man and Lazarus, you're either going to go to heaven or hell. My friends, I wish I didn't have to speak about death, but I tell you, as I get older, I'm starting to see it more and more. When I was a young man, I lived a very reckless life, a very selfish life, all about myself. I did things, went to places I shouldn't have been with people I shouldn't have been with, did things I shouldn't have done that could have killed me. I had a couple of close calls with death myself. But when you're young, you think you're Superman. You don't think you're going to die. And you don't fear death. And you, if you do die, you always said, oh, I'll go to a better place. What an ignorant person I was growing up. But now God has opened my eyes. He's revealed his word to me. And I realize now that the, bere the brevity of life and how severe it is that when we die, and if we die without Christ, the penalty of our sins and eternal torment is so real. Now I'm in my mid-50s and I'm seeing death more and more. As you get older, people that you loved and you grew up with are passing away. A few years ago, I buried my father. This past year, I buried my mother. And a few years ago, I, unexpectedly, I had to bury my own younger brother. As a child, you expect to bury your parents, but you don't expect to bury your own child. My mother had to do that years ago with my brother. But death is a reality. Romans chapter 14 verse 8 tells us that whether we live or die, we live unto the Lord. My brothers and sisters, your life is not your own. We're only short time stewards of what God has given us. Let us spend our time wisely living for the Lord, preparing ourselves for an eternal glory in heaven, realizing this, that the short temporary pains that we have here on this earth is but for a short time. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 tells us that. That the pain and sufferings that we have here on earth is temporary. It's nothing compared to the eternal weight of glory that awaits us in heaven. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 tells us that in Christ, when we die and we go to heaven, God is going to wipe away every tear. There's going to be no more sin, no more evidence of sin, no more consequences of sin. See, here on earth, in Christ, we are free from the guilt and the penalty of sin. But we still have to deal with the consequences of sin here on earth. But once we go to be with the Lord in heaven forever, that is all abolished. God bless you all this day, my brothers and sisters. I encourage you to pray for your unsaved loved ones, that they would come to Christ, and that they would be freed from the penalty of sin and hell through his atoning work on the cross. Take care.